There's an African proverb that says the birth of a baby is like crossing a bridge and every woman must, must cross that bridge alone. But once she gets to the other side, she begins to understand that the bridge she crossed was on the back of women who have gone before her. Hello moms and dads and welcome back to Nurse Only Teaches. My name is Onyinye. If this is your first time here, you are most welcome. Make sure you look around at some of the other content on the channel as I believe that you may find them valuable no matter where you are in your pregnancy or postpartum journey. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. And if you have not done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and do not forget to turn on your notification bell because that is how you are made aware of every time a new video is uploaded. Now, as you can tell by today's title, I am going to be discussing some signs that women can use to gauge whether they are nearing their due date or if they still have a little while longer to go. Now, keep in mind that these signs may mean a couple of days before labor for one woman and then a couple of weeks for another woman. So make sure that you are not using this information to diagnose yourself. Instead, make sure that you are working very closely with the provider who knows your health history so that when plans of care are created, they fit your needs and are tailored appropriately. Without further ado, let us jump right into today's video. One of the earliest signs that a mom is nearing the delivery of her baby is something known as lightning. During the lightning process, the baby's presenting part begins to descend into the woman's pelvis in preparation for birth. Now that presenting part can be the baby's head, it can be an arm, or it can even be a leg. But hopefully for women who want to deliver vaginally, that presenting part is the baby's head or something known as the vertex presentation. Keep in mind though, that if you are a first time mom, Lightning may occur a lot later in the process for you than for moms who have delivered in the past. For instance, in my situation, by the time I was delivering my fourth child, my lightning process occurred towards the end of my second trimester and into the beginning of my third trimester, where a first time mom may not even experience lightning until she is in active labor. So keep that in mind. Another thing is, as your baby engages into the pelvis in preparation for birth, you now have room to breathe. So lightning is not altogether a very bad process but the trade-off for you being able to breathe sometimes may mean that the increased pressure will cause you to have a lot more trips to the bathroom and then it can also cause another early sign that points to labor known as lightning crotch and lightning crotch is exactly what it sounds like it feels like lightning surging through a woman's pelvic and crotch area and that is because the baby's head is now putting pressure on the surrounding structures and the nerve endings that are attached to those structures are being activated and that pain is shooting through the nerve and that discomfort you know a lot of women can manage it by moving around shifting positions but keep in mind that if you are dealing with lightning in your crotch area you are certainly getting closer to the delivery of your baby so hang in there mom another sign that moms may be nearing the birth of their baby is something known as the nesting syndrome during the nesting part of pregnancy a mom can get a burst of energy and all of a sudden she truly feels like she can conquer the world and do anything now, now, a lot of moms, while they feel that nesting burst of energy, will wash all of their baby's clothes, get everything ready. Sometimes they will even clean the house from ceiling to floor, go outside, you know, offer to help the neighbor mow his lawn. For my situation, I painted my toddler's room and the baby's room in one afternoon amongst doing a whole lot more that I really shouldn't have been doing. So a lot of women get this burst of energy and they just go, 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 go in preparation for the birth of their baby. I've also found that the nesting syndrome is not unique to mothers. I've seen a lot of fathers also experience that burst of energy as they begin to realize that the birth of their baby is impending. They join mom, they put their hands together and they get their home absolutely ready for the birth of their baby. Now, keep in mind that if you continue to go at a high octane, you can definitely increase the chances of experiencing this next sign that you may be approaching the birth of your baby, and that is known as extreme fatigue. Now, as a woman begins to near the birth of her baby, her body that has been working hard for all these months begins to feel very tired very easily. Keep in mind that at this point, your baby has pretty much reached the maximum amount of weight that he or she will gain, and that's another point I'll get to it later. So you are carrying around a lot of baby weight a lot of fluid weight and just 
Trying to make your day work smoothly with all of that on board can be very tiring for moms. Keep in mind that if your body is giving you signs that it is tired, that you need to rest. As you approach delivery, keep in mind that it's called labor for a reason. Your body has to do a lot of work to bring the baby here safely. So if your body is telling you to rest, take a few moments and rest your muscles. Your body will thank you for it once labor begins. Another sign that a lot of mothers deal with is an increase in the amount of vaginal discharge that they deal with. Now, this is not the typical increase from baseline from before you got pregnant because a lot of pregnant women do report an increase in the amount of discharge that they experience. But as you near the birth of your baby, you will have an increase on top of the increase of your normal vaginal discharge. And that discharge should be clear to kind of whitish. It can be thick or it can be watery. As long as it's not itching or it's not discolored, it's not greenish or yellow or anything of that sort, you should be okay. Some Sometimes the discharge can even be pinkish because as you near your delivery, your body begins to thin and efface the cervix. And as the cervix begins to thin down, a lot of blood vessels can get damaged and that blood that seeps out of those blood vessels can mix in with the vaginal discharge and give it a pinkish tinge. But make sure you keep your eye on it and report whatever discoloration or increases even in your discharge that you experience to your medical provider. Now, another sign that many moms sometimes may miss, but is frequently reported is something known as increased clumsiness. As a woman begins to near the birth of her baby, the hormone relaxin is released in a higher quantity within the body. And what relaxin hopes to do is cause all those cervical joints and muscles to, you know, get relaxed. The name of the hormone is relaxin and its function is to relax the tension in those muscles so that when your baby begins to crown or you begin to go into labor, your body works efficiently to ensure a smooth delivery. Unfortunately, relaxin doesn't just work in a woman's pelvic region. It begins to work in your arm joint. It begins to work in your leg joints and all of a sudden what seemed easily accomplished in the past few weeks all of a sudden you find yourself tripping over accomplishing it so if you are walking make sure that you are wearing shoes that can support your weight make sure that the path in front of you is clear if it is slippery make sure you have support if you are dealing with harsh weather such as snow or rain make sure somebody is there with you or hold on to a guardrail so that you do not fall or trip Another sign that a lot of moms experience as they near the delivery of their baby is the increased urge to have a bowel movement or just simply the need to poop more. Now, this can be normal for many women because as you near your delivery date, a lot of times the hormones begin to be secreted in higher quantities, causing your body's dynamics to shift a little bit. If you feel the need to poop a whole lot more than before, make sure that you are following it up by hydrating yourself. Diarrhea or any sort of liquid bowel movement causes your body to lose a lot of fluids. So you want to make sure that you are replacing that fluid. You can even try electrolyte loaded beverages like Gatorade, but make sure you talk to your provider before you take this on. And keep in mind that if you're dealing with diarrhea during this period that you are really close to giving birth and it's almost over. Now, last but certainly not least, a lot of women report dealing with emotional changes as they near the birth of their baby. For me, when my children were getting ready to be born, uh, one of the things that I dealt with was a lot of anxiety. With my first baby, I was very afraid of what labor would bring with it. With the other babies, because I gave birth naturally with no medication, I knew what to expect and that gave me some level of emotional worry, some concerns, anxiety, things of that sort. But if you are dealing with these things, talk to your provider. There is a proverb and, and I'm going to give the context before I tell the proverb. A lot of women reach out to me and ask and what labor would feel like. That's a very difficult thing to describe. So there's this African proverb that says, giving birth is like crossing a bridge. A woman must walk it alone. But when she gets to the other side of the bridge, she begins to discover that the bridge she crossed was on the back of women who have gone before her. So if you are dealing with anxiety, talk to women who have given birth before. Talk to your doctor. Talk to your mother. Talk to your aunt. These individuals become your support team and get you ready mentally for the process of birth. And then while you are in the active phase of giving birth, know that your midwife or your doctor or the text or whoever is in that room is there to support you through the process to ensure the best outcome for you and your baby. Now, other emotional changes that moms can deal with include 
weepiness, just the need to cry, or even sometimes be happy, and they don't really understand why. Some moms can even begin to be impatient, where throughout their entire pregnancy, they have just kind of paced themselves through. Keep in mind that as you near the birth of your baby, a lot of hormones begin to rise in preparation for the birth of the baby, and a lot of hormones begin to go down as the pregnancy ends. So give your yourself a little bit of time to adjust to these emotional lability and know that as long as everything is okay, the process is almost over and you and baby will be able to navigate through this last leg of your journey. Now, if you have learned anything in the content of this video, be sure to give it a huge like. If you know somebody who can benefit from this information, do not fail to share it with them. Also hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already and turn on your notification bell because that's how you will be made aware of every time a new video is uploaded. I wish you a healthy, safe and swift delivery and a smooth recovery following the birth of your baby and until the next time be blessed